Hello, everybody. Welcome to Soapbox. My name is Mauro Di Pasquale. Soapbox is produced and presented at WCCA TV 13, the People's Channel. We're glad you're here. People's Channel is Worcester's public access community television station. And uh, this is the place where you can learn to create your very own television show. We provide the tools, the studio, the facilities, the cameras, and the action. Uh, you provide all everything else. You provide the action, actually, and the content, and anything you would like to contribute to the program and just have your own show. You can contribute as a news a citizen journalism on our News 13 program. Uh, you can con be a contributing writer. So there's all kinds of uh, programs available for you right here, including uh, youth programs and, and senior citizens and all of it. Just take a look at our schedule at WCCATV.com, where you can find the streaming in real time and you can also archive, you can also uh, download some of your favorite WCCA shows as we have them archived for on-demand viewing at WCCA TV 13. Uh, I say this a lot. The, the Worcester is very rich uh, in social value. There, there's many cult cultural institutions and events going on. Uh, a lot of activity, a lot of people of concern, uh, and they share those concerns publicly, <clears throat> and we're glad to be a part of that. And uh, every year, there's this really neat, fantastic, it started out, I wanted to say a neat little, but it's not, I don't think it's so little anymore. It's starting to really grow and gain uh, momentum. It's Worcester's Veg Fest. So we're here with the organizers of the event. We have Drew Wilson, who's the founder of the event, and uh, Mike Benedetti, uh, who, who we all know from 508 and his work at CCA and part of this uh, program as well. Thanks for being here, guys. Now, Mike, how, yes. what's your relationship with VegFest? My relationship with VegFest this year is that I've been helping organize a little bit, though not as much as I always wish that I would. It's such a great event. It's a fantastic event. I just remember the first year, you know, the first year of the VegFest was just a ton of work, and um, that, I, you know, I was a little bit skeptical. Would people step up and do it again? But now, Drew, this is the third year? Third year, yeah. Third year. And it, it's just bigger than ever. It's true. The first year, our, we went into it thinking, this is Worcester, it's not, it's not Boston. We're gonna try and get 500 people to come to an event and, and see how it goes. We were blown away when it was a, over, over 1,000 people came, over 2,000 people actually. So then the second year, uh, we were like, okay, we'll see, is this the first year? We got a lot of momentum for the first year, let's see what happens with the second year. We're blown away again when we had 3,000 people come out. So now we're coming up on the third year. We're moving to a new location, to Worcester Tech High, up at the top of, top of Route 9. Um, in that beautiful the, new building. The vocational school. Yep, 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 the new vocational school. It's beautiful. It's right next to Green Hill Park. The inside has two levels. We have a giant conference room for our speakers. Um, we can fit more exhibitors, um, more food vendors, and fit a lot more people in there, too. Fantastic. So it's at a new location, mm -hmm. uh, right, at the, right at the beginning of Green Hill Park, right? Yeah. At the Worcester Vocational School. And it's the third year. Now, what about admission? Is there a fee to... Tickets? Nope, it's that? free. It's been free each year, and we're going to continue to have it free. Um, the whole point is we want to have people come out and sample some vegetarian food. It's a fun time. You can bring your family. There's kids' activities. There's going to be a moon bounce for kids, or maybe wow. maybe for not kids, too, for adults, yeah. oh, depending on how they let you do it. But <laughs> that's, that's great. Why discriminate, right? If we want to bounce around, we should yeah. be able to, right? Kids are adults. So it's family-friendly, a new location, and the vocational school, the third annual. I didn't even say that at the beginning, because it's, it's, that's, that's great. Congratulations to you. Much kudos. Thanks. Uh, on, uh, on driving this forward. Um, <clears throat> how many exhibitors do you uh, plan to have there? It's a good question. Um, so uh, the first year, um, the first year we were testing it out, we got, um, I think we had only five or six food exhibitors, not too many, and we ran out of food by about two o'clock. Oh, it was sad. It was pretty sad. The second year, though, we doubled it. We went up to, um, I think we had 12, even more than double, um, 12 or 13 food exhibitors, and we had food throughout the day. I think, I think the food ran out a little bit before the event was over, but what we heard from, from our attendees, we did a survey afterwards, is that they want more food. So this year we're gonna have even more food exhibitors. We're gonna have somewhere around 50 wow. towards the end. We've got space for a little bit more. It's yeah. not totally finalized yet, but yeah. there's gonna be a lot of them. Yeah, now when's the date for this? It's April? Oh, I'm sorry, it's April 15th. Um, April 15th. Yep, is from 11 o'clock. It's a Sunday. It's a Sunday. Yep. Sunday, April 15th at Vocational School, mm -hmm. Worcester Veg Fest. Where, where do these exhibitors come from? Are they Worcester uh, restaurants? and? Yep. Um, so we, we have um, all of the vegetarian restaurants in Worcester. There's about five of them that are all vegetarian, and they're all going to be there. That's um, We have Indian food. We have um, East Asian food. We have Jamaican food, um, Mexican food, across the gamut. Mm -hmm. um, 
the whole spectrum. We're also going to have some folks coming out from Boston, some, from some of the vegetarian restaurants in Boston. And we're also going to have some places in Worcester that aren't all vegetarian, but have really good vegetarian options. So they can showcase them there. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. That's, that's really good. It's really, it's adding a whole new level of inclusivity to this whole event, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So uh, last time, the, I remember the first year, you had some really interesting speakers there. Um, what about this year? Do you going to have people put up, do I, some? I think this is the all-star team of speakers this year. Let's talk about so, the, so I think that the two people who people are going to have heard about the most, probably, one would be Dr. T. Colin Campbell. Mm -hmm. He's very well known for this book, The China Study. It's consistently a bestseller, looking at, um, across the nation of China, looking at what people eat and then what their health outcomes are oh, based yeah. on what they eat. And the guy from Forks Over Knives. The guy from exactly. the movie Forks Over Knives. Oh, yeah. His the, research is, was the focus of the film, Forks Over Knives. Yes. Yeah, folks, you've got to watch that movie. Go ahead, I'm sorry. So, well, <laughs> sure, people should watch the movie. And then people should come to the VegFest and talk to Dr. Campbell, listen to his talk, and uh, talk to him afterwards. So he's a, big, I mean, he's a big name in the world of vegetarian nutrition. Uh, another, another huge name is Kathy Freston. She's written books like Quantum Wellness and Veganist. She's always appearing in newspapers and magazines and on television. She's appears on shows like Ellen all the time. She used to be on Oprah a lot. Uh, Oprah actually in 2008 did a 21-day vegan cleanse and Kathy was sort of the impetus for that and one of the, one of the people supervising this. So this is again somebody who's like involved with, with vegetarian nutrition and health concerns and on, I mean, on the national level, as much on the national level as anybody mm -hmm. uh, in the world. But then there's also a few people who I bet the people at home may not have heard of, but who are also pretty awesome. Um, one of them is a guy named Nathan Runkel, mm -hmm. who founded an organization called Mercy for Animals, which is one of the smaller organizations probably that's involved in uh, the welfare, of, looking at the welfare of farmed animals, but also an extremely effective organization in working in that area. So again, people who have an interest in uh, animal protection or animal rights or things like this. This is also going to be somebody who they're going to be very interested to hear from and maybe talk with, you know, after the, after the talk about that area. And then there's the, the people from Our Hen House. Yeah, so um, similar to Mike's podcast, 508, um, uh, Mary Ann Sullivan and Jasmine Singer run a podcast called Our Hen House, um, which is based out of New York City. They focus on um, vegetarian events, and they actually, um, about a month ago, or maybe it was two months ago at this point, made a uh, mashup of all the different veg fests across the country. Um, they've traveled across the country to go to these events, and they take some video from it so that people can see what it looks like in other places too. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to be. They both have backgrounds in animal protection issues. One of them is a lawyer that used to work for Farm Sanctuary. The other one did work for the Animal Legal Defense Fund. They both have a background in animal protection, but now they're working on creating this cool podcast that showcases vegetarian living, particularly on the East Coast. Um, mm -hmm. and mostly in New York City. Um, but they're funny, they're upbeat. We're actually going to have one of them interviewing Kathy Freston, um, just like she was on Ellen or Oprah, mm -hmm. and do a sort, of, a sort of back and forth that way, yeah. make it a little more dynamic. So, Mike, are we taking some cameras down here? WCCA, be, I we'll will definitely have a camera You'll be there. there. I hope that yeah. there's going to be WCC interns there. I hope that there's people yeah. in the community at large who bring their cameras down. That's and right. Cut something and, and submit that to the station. Yeah, because, uh, it's, it's fantastic. Very informational, too. Mm -hmm. well, let's talk about the, what is the link between, because you have vegetarian and veganism and then animal rights. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because you have an interesting blend of speakers here uh, from, the, from the blogcasters uh, and the work that they're doing to guys like Nathan and mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Campbell. Campbell, yeah. Um, can you talk about that, the link? Because I know Campbell even touched upon uh, certain issues regarding farming that could yes. be done without using you know, genome foods and stuff. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I think that people are vegetarian for a lot of reasons. And the big three reasons that people always talk about are health, uh, environmental concerns, the, the concern that raising animals for food is maybe not the best use of our resources if we want to get food to as many people as possible. And then the third would be like the welfare of the animals, or sometimes people would say animal rights. Mm -hmm. So that's so I think that for a lot of vegetarians, that's one piece of the of the puzzle. I also think that um, whichever piece of that puzzle is a priority for you, and maybe causes you to make a little bit of a shift in your diet. I think that once you've made that shift, it can be the other things can then become more compelling to you. You know, like once you're not 
once you're not, for example, I mean, like once you're not eating animals every day or on a regular basis, or maybe just rarely or not at all, then you can be a little more open. It maybe kind of changes your perspective yeah. on these other issues. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think you're right. Once you kind of realize something, everybody could take away a little something and that can change, that can yeah. make a change for them. Yeah. Like you said, it could be health. And Because yeah. I remember there was some talk about the way they genetically modify wheat, for example, and, and some of the offshoots of that impact people's health. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where they can't digest the wheat the same way. And here you are thinking, I'm going to eat wheat and that's healthy and that's great. But then all of a sudden, you know, you, you need to be on a gluten-free diet because of mm -hmm. the way the wheat is produced. So Sure. Yeah. Well, I think... Um, I think it's interesting too that, for example, on the question of animal welfare and farmed animal welfare, an overwhelming majority of Americans are in favor of improved standards for farmed animal welfare. Mm -hmm. Like, like an overwhelming majority like is in favor of nothing else. Like, baseball, apple pie, farmed animal welfare. These are probably like the three big things. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at these surveys, it's kind of incredible. Yet, obviously, most people are not vegetarian. It's also the kind of thing where. You know, you can be concerned about these things and make some changes to your diet or some changes to your lifestyle. And some people will go all the way and become a vegan or something. And some people will make a partial change, whatever they feel is appropriate. Right. I, I think one of the nice things about the Veg Fest is that, although we have a lot, we have speakers who are speaking from various perspectives. It's the kind of event where, that you can go to if you're, you know, you can eat a hamburger and come to the Veg Fest and then say like, I want to try some vegetarian food. I've heard about this. I think it's an interesting thing. I would like to maybe eat a little bit less meat, but I can't really mm -hmm. imagine what food is not meat food. So this right. is a place you can come, try some food, maybe talk to some people, maybe listen to some speakers, or maybe just come by and see what's going on. Yeah. So and it's pretty easy, I think, these days, if you live in Worcester, to, be, to sort of, you know, partake in, in, in become a vegetarian, actually, really. Yeah, and that's, that's what we're hoping to show people with the festival, too. Like Mike's saying, there's a lot of reasons why people choose to be vegan or vegetarian. And our event tries to show a lot of those and to have a space for all of those people that are interested in maybe eating a little bit less meat or eating more vegetables or eating a little healthier or maybe come from many of these different perspectives that are represented by mm -hmm. our speakers. And one of the things that I hope everyone will take away from our festival is that there are tons and tons of places in Worcester to get really good vegan food. Yeah. Even if you just want to eat vegan once a week, you can go out to Belmont Veg up on Route 9, or you can go out to Utopi in Shrewsbury, or you could go to one of the two Loving Hut all vegan Chinese restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You could do it once a week, you could do it every day, but yeah. we've got plenty of options here in Worcester. I think it's a really smart idea to, uh, to invite restaurants that are offering a both on their menus today, because if you're on the if you're, if you're sort of going back and forth, if you're teetering whether or not, or whether you are, or maybe some other family members aren't, you can yeah. still go to the same place and have a good time, and at least you're doing your small part. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. there's like a ton of places in Worcester that offer great vegetarian options, but aren't an all-vegetarian place. Like Tortilla Sam's over on Highland Street is one of my favorite places to go with friends. They've got a yeah. great unchicken fajita, which is like yeah. a mock chicken. Um, I love to get yeah. that, but they also have all the other traditional Mexican things, too. Yeah, so everybody gets what uh, what they feel they can can do at the time. So you got free, you got kids activities. We, we do have to wrap up early. We've got to a late start. Okay. And, mm -hmm. But we want to make sure you guys get on. I know Mike's going to do more on, on his show. Cool. Util, be, be sure to utilize News 13, Jennifer, and, and get the word out. It's April 15th. Mm -hmm. What uh, time again? 11, uh, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And it's at the Vocational School in Worcester, Worcester Tech School on uh, Belmont Street. Some great speakers. Um, and a little bit more about the activities. is family fun. Yep, there'll be, um, we're going to have some family entertainment, um, so you can bring the kids, there'll be some activities for them. There's going to be roller derby happening outside um, throughout, the, throughout <laughs> most of the event. There's going to be a ton of dynamic stuff going on, so there'll always be something you can participate in. We'll have cooking demos, we'll have present presentations, we'll have food sampling, all sorts of stuff. So. Wow, so, so go with your appetite. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, cause you, and you're going to find uh, some really pleasant surprises too. And it lives up to the word fest, huh? So mm -hmm. it's veg fest. Yeah, definitely. There's definitely a festival going on up there. Any final comments? We've got about less than a minute, but any final words to Are say? Are you going to talk about the mug? Let's talk. Oh, yeah, well, we want to thank Snow Ghost. Meet the real Snow Ghost right here at WCCA TV. Bruce, this is for you. But using your cup, Mike saw it. <laughs> it's a staple of the soapbox. That's my only comment. That's the only comment. <laughs> oh, Snow Ghost likes it. Maybe he'll be there. He will definitely yeah, be there. Yeah, he'll be there. So go over there and see Snow Ghost from WCCA. Say hello at Veg Fest. April 15th, 11 to 5. Drew, thank you very much. Yeah, Keep in touch with us. Totally. Uh, Mike, thank you. It's always a pleasure. Yes. Veg Fest, April 15th, 11 to 5 at Worcester Vocational School on Route 9. Go there. You, it's going to be great. You're going to love it. I guarantee it. 
Until next time, I'm Marlon DePasquale. I look forward to seeing you on WCCA TV 13, the People's Channel. Good. I'm sorry, we only ended up.